Where were you in 1992 at the time of the first Rio conference on sustainable development? I was still a student at the time at the university in Copenhagen and uh, still not into the sustainability agenda yet. Over the last 20 years, how has industry responded to the challenge of sustainable development and how has this been com communicated to you? I think industry has taken a more and more serious approach to sustainability over the last 20 years. Uh, the sustainability agenda has the problem that it, it's easy to talk about, but uh, very few take specific action. But I think we see more and more companies being serious about it, both for their own sake, uh, but also because the customers and the consumers want them to be serious about it. For the last 18 months, you have worked with European Climate Action Commissioner Connie Hildegard in the context of the UN High-Level Panel on Global Sustainability. What are the three key messages of the report launched by the panel in January? We had some very difficult discussions on the panel uh, because uh, sustainability is a very broad agenda and people of course have their own uh, priorities they would like to highlight. But I think we came out with a good report and if I should mention three things it would be that we need to set new goals in the world, uh, sustainable development goals. Um, those could, for example, be in energy. Uh, there is an initiative now by the UN Secretary General, Sustainable Energy for All, which is about setting a goal for 2030 about access to energy, about doubling renewables, and doubling energy efficiency on a global scale. So that could be one of those new goals that the world should set in 2015. Uh, another uh, thing from the report is about the means to achieve the goals. For example, the pricing, uh, the pricing of our um, environmental harm that we do in our consumption and our production. Uh, we need to price those external effects of our production and consumption. We do it in Europe, for example, with our carbon market and taxation, but other countries of the world need uh, to follow our lead and Europe needs to do it even better. So there is a huge question about how we price goods so we can get the right incentives to behave sustainably. And a final thing I would highlight from the work of this panel is how we measure growth, uh, how we measure prosperity. It's not enough just to measure GDP and economic growth. We need to measure the social and the environmental aspects of growth as well. Uh, so, so there we have a challenge in the global community because the BNP supporters are a very strong a group of uh, powerful people, but we need uh, to look beyond pure GDP and measure our prosperity and our success differently so we take into account the social and the environmental aspects of well-being as well. How does this report build on the work of the Brundtland Commission, which coined the term sustainable development 25 years ago? We were lucky to have uh, Kohal and Brundtland on the panel. Uh, so I guess we all took our point of departure from her presence. Uh, nobody questions the work she did back in 1987. It's still, it's still value. Uh, it, it, nothing, the problems are the same. And as Gro said, the, 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 the key challenge we have is to actually start doing what we are saying. Uh, so it became about implementation. How do we uh, actually uh, in real life uh, do sustainable development rather than just use it as a, as a beautiful slogan and we put it in statements and in programs but we don't really act on it. So, so we talked a lot about implementation and we used Kohal uh, and as our terms of reference for saying okay we know what we need to do let's get it done and let's find out what are the barriers that have prevented us from taking action in the past. In what ways do Commissioner Hedegaard and her co-panelists intend to ensure that this report makes a substantial contribution to driving the sustainable development agenda forward at Rio Plus 20? Well, uh, all panel members have promised to, to advocate the recommendations throughout the world. We have uh, panel members from all countries of the world and it's important that they uh, make an effort in, in circulating and in, in advocating for, for the messages. Uh, my commissioner, Connie Hedegaard, will do that uh, in her European environment and uh, where she travels in the world. And I think all panel members will, will, will do an effort to, to sell some of those uh, points that we have made in, in the report. Uh, and this will be especially important the closer we come to Rio and maybe the most frustrated people are about not having concrete outcomes. Well, this panel report offers some ideas and uh, panel members will, will be out there uh, uh, making their points known. 
Based on the work of the panel, what contribution would you like to see from industry and other stakeholders in the run-up to Rio Plus 20? Well, what we first and foremost need is, is industry to support the agenda and also industry to be ready to take their responsibility. Uh, in the panel we had many discussions about using the markets. One mistake probably of the past is that we think governments can handle all the problems and find all the solutions. We can't. We have established a global economy uh, based on the market forces and we need to make use of them and, and make sure that they contribute. Uh, therefore we need to bring sustainability into the core of the political and economic agenda. We need to bring it into the finance ministries but also into the offices of the CEOs of the companies so they start thinking about sustainable development in their planning of their business activities. We need companies to report on their sustainable development achievements uh, so it's being a serious matter that is also used when we uh, measure companies success and when investors uh, look for where they want to put their uh, uh, funds.